In this example, we will see how EMS for inventor can be used to find the force acting on a steel plate due to a Halbach array of magnets. The first thing we need to do before we start the simulation is to prepare the geometry. We need to create what is called as the air geometry. Here I have a box surrounding the magnets and the steel plate. Let us look at interference detection. I'm going to window select all the components, select interference detection. Notice that I have a lot of interference. We need to subtract all the inner components from the outer box. To do that, let me go ahead and edit the air geometry. I'm also going to go ahead and remove the visibility of the outer air so that it's easy for me to select all the inner components. I select the copy object command and then I go ahead and select all the six different components that reside inside the air box. It's very important that I select the composite feature and say OK. Now I can go ahead and decide to show the air box. I have to use the sculpt command in Inventor and I select the remove option and I click on the composite that I just created. Then I open this so I can view the right option. Now you have to select the option where you are still able to see the air box without this red contour. For example, this would not be the right option. So you would have to select the option where the air box doesn't appear in the red outer contour and say OK and return. Now we have subtracted all the inner components from the outer air box. I can window select all of them and select interference detection and notice that there are no interferences detected. Now you're ready to do simulation using EMS for Inventor. To activate EMS for Inventor, you need to first install the program. When you install the program, it will appear as an add-in here. Now you can select Start EMS and now you're ready to do the simulation using EMS for Inventor. The first step in doing a simulation is to create a new study. So I select the new study option and uh, I select the magnetostatic study option. I also click on parameterization. Now parameterization is a feature by which I can manipulate any dimension that I created using Inventor. Here. I'm going to modify the distance of the steel plate from the magnet array and use that distance as a parameter in this simulation. Once a study is defined, a study tree is automatically created for me. Now I need to apply the material for various components. All the five magnets, they are made of neodymium, magnet. So I right click select apply materials and from the uh, material library I select permanent magnets neodymium and select N4212 and say apply. Next I select the steel and then I open the non-linear magnetic material folder and I select steel 1008. Now you can view the magnetic properties of the steel that is selected and I hit apply. Finally the air, the outer air is given the air material and I close apply and close. Thus I have applied the materials to various components. The next thing that I need to do is define the direction for my magnets. So to do that, I'm going to select my magnet 
and I right click and select coercivity direction. Now I have one of the magnets that have been selected. I can go ahead and select the direction of coercivity. In this case, it is along y-axis, in along the positive y-axis and I say OK. So I've applied one direction to the magnet. Let's go ahead and select the next magnet. Here the direction is along the positive x-axis. So I right click again, select coercivity direction. I pick Cartesian coordinate along x-axis and I say OK. For the third magnet, it is going to be along the minus y-axis. So I right click, select coercivity direction. I pick Cartesian along y-axis and then I hit the reverse button to do along negative y-axis. Then the fourth magnet is along negative x-axis. So I just hit the reverse button. And finally, the last magnet is along positive y-axis. I use the coercivity direction again, pick along positive y-axis and say OK. So I have applied actually the magnet direction to each of these magnets. The next thing that I need to do is request the program to calculate the force acting on the steel plate. To do that, I right click on forces and torques and select an option called virtual work. Here, I can just go ahead and select the steel plate from inventor and then I say OK. Remember, we check the parameterization option. Now is the time for us to define the parameter. In other words, the dimension in inventor that we will modify. Let me double click on the design scenario option. Now, almost all the variables that have been defined in inventor is available. And I made sure to create a variable called gap. And that is actually the variable that defines the distance the steel plate is at from the bottom of the magnet array. Now, I would like to uh, study this distance from a minimum of 0.2 inches to a maximum of 0.5 inches and at 0.1. And when I say generate, then I create 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 for such scenarios where the distance is going to be modified automatically by the program and the results for each of these scenarios will be computed by EMS. I say OK and I have actually defined the various scenarios. In this case, four such scenarios. Because we are interested in computing the force acting on the steel plate, it's important to have a very fine mesh on the steel plate. To do that, I'm going to actually apply what is called as a mesh control. I right click on the mesh and select apply mesh control. Um, it's sufficient for me to apply the mesh control on just the top face of the steel plate. So I select the top face and uh, then um, here I go to the average number of elements per diagonal and make it 140. And then I say OK. This way we have applied what is called as a mesh control to the top surface of the steel plate. And the mesh control is going to propagate throughout the steel plate and it's going to ensure that we get a good mesh in the steel plate that will ensure a good value for the force acting on the steel plate. With this, the definition of our study is completed. Now we need to right click on the study and select run. This will run the simulation. Once the simulation is over, we will now take a look at the results. 
the simulation has been completed. Now we can take a look at the results. The first type of results that we'll be looking at is given in the result table. Here we are going to look at the force acting on the steel plate for various scenarios. Scenario one is where the distance is 0.2 inches. And I can go to the force tab and you can see the force acting is over 1095 newtons in the positive y-axis. Obviously, when I go to scenario four, where the distance is 0.5 inches, the force acting is going to be much lesser and it is around 445 newtons. Thus, EMS will be able to give you the value of the force acting on the steel plate at various distances from the magnet. The next thing we will be looking at is what is called as the magnetic flux density plot. So I'm going to create a 3D plot of the magnetic flux density. Now, because we have the air region two, so you see all of them in blue, what we need to do next is right click on the plot and select section clipping. Now here we can take a section plane and look at the result from this section plane. Notice the areas where you have high magnetic flux density clearly indicated. And I can move the color chart and I can also make it better so that you know that the maximum flux density in the steel plate is close to two Teslas. Now this is at a distance of 0.2 inches. I can edit this plot and I can change to another scenario, say scenario four and say, okay, automatically EMS is going to update the plot for the new scenario. Now you can see the value of the magnetic flux density has been updated. It's now 1.5 Teslas because the steel plate is at a larger distance from the magnet. Also reflects the flux density in this air gap and you can see that difference. Sometimes we would like to view vectors. So you can right click and uh, edit the plot and you can select vector instead of fringe and say okay. Now the same plot is now going to uh, appear as vectors. So you can see um, we can actually go ahead and change the vector options, change the size of the vectors, and also we can change the density of the vectors. And that will actually uh, give us a better understanding of the magnetic flux density, um, and also the flux lines as vectors in the model. As a recap, we saw how we can use EMS for inventor to study the force acting on a steel plate due to a Holbach array. We also use the parametric simulation inside EMS for inventor to vary the distance between the steel plate and the magnet. And EMS for inventor was able to give us the results for each of this scenario. Thank you for watching this video.